<laughs> Liz is making fun of me. I'm just going, right, hi, this is Todd Stewart, Smart Business Moves. It's Friday afternoon. Yay, it's Friday. Uh, today is on the spot, our favorite day. Fridays are our favorite for a lot of reasons. Um, Liz, how are you today? I'm well, Tom. Thanks. How are you doing today? I'm, uh, I'm doing good. I am doing really well. Um, Dan's with us today. Um, Dan, share a little bit who about guessed? Who I'm guessed? Sorry? Who guessed? I'm who wondering guessed? who guessed that it was Dan. Who figured it out? We have, oh, I don't even have my phone up yet to know who's there. Nobody's I don't know if actually, 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 we've got, I mean, we've got some people on, but nobody's saying anything in chat yet. I mean, you work with oh. Dan a lot, Liz. Why don't you introduce him a little bit before he, uh, shares his story. Oh uh, yeah, Dan the man with plan. Uh, okay, so first I wanna tell you though, Dan, on the right-hand side of your screen, where it says private chat, there's another tab that says comments. You can, you can see, I see yourself. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you're the first you. person, nobody ever sees it. I always have to tell everybody. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I work with Dan in um, our MMA group. And how Dan got dumped into our group is he signed up for foundations. And part of the perks of being in foundations is six months in the MMA program. So uh, that's how I know Dan. And Dan, I, I feel like we've really gotten to know each other well because of that group. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So it, what started at six months, I, um, I've i already uh, invested a little bit further and in, in, in I'm locked in for another six months. So you're stuck with me for, uh, for a full year. Aww. <laughs> yeah, when um when I thought that we might be losing you after only six months, I was like kind of crushed. Like, oh my gosh, you know, you you're the brainchild of a lot of the ideas that we do, and some of our best ideas, which I know we can't really talk about, but some of our best ideas were your brain children. So that sounds weird, brain children. Brain children. Huh? Yeah, brain children. It, it's, yeah. Uh, brain child. It's a good group. Uh, guys, I'm happy to, to be here uh, and uh, grateful for the opportunity. And, and Liz, uh, obviously, uh, kicking off the quick introduction. But uh, my name is Dan Smith, and I'm the owner of Homemade Better out of Oklahoma City. Uh, we're creeping up on four years in business now, so very much um, a small business, still trying to find our way. Uh, but like uh, like most of you out there, we've um, had a lot of ups and downs uh, as of late, uh, no difference. Um, but my background is on the technical side. So it's been really fun and enjoyable blending uh, the technical skill set that, that I've uh, learned along the way with, uh, with the new industry that, that I've kind of uh, dug my heels into. Awesome. Well, we're going to uh, have some fun here uh, shortly. We're going to be asking, answering a bunch of questions. But uh, Liz, Sarah has a question, I think, for you. She wants to hear more about the clue on Dan that gave uh, a lot of people, I guess, gave it away. Yeah, well, um, the reason why I said the clue about Dan is he's not a face that's out there. Not a lot of people know who Dan is or have met him. He's not one of the people that's in every single chat room talking about everything under the sun. He's kind of a workhorse, <laughs> and he sort of puts his head to the grindstone and work, 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 work. So not a lot of people know him, but um, I want him to get more out there, and so that's why we brought him on Smart Business Moves because he's one of the smartest people I've met. And I, I think that he has a ton to offer to our industry. And I want to make sure that people have the opportunity to meet him and work with him. So, so another you know that. what you're saying is this isn't the last time you're going to see Dan. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, my head may not be able to fit in the frame next, uh, next go round. <laughs> No, uh, but, uh, thank you. Thank come you. on, Dan. Come on. You know. You know it's true. Leslie mm -hmm. is uh, saying hi. So I guess she recovered from yesterday. Hey, Leslie. Thanks again. She's still, she's still vacationing. Well, yeah, of course cool. she's recovering. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you, Leslie. Yeah, real, real quick before we uh, get into uh, on the spot. Next week, uh, Greg Shucker is going to join us. Uh, and real quickly, he's got a lot of really good information on how he personally has been able to recruit talent from all over the world to help him in various aspects of his business. And it's uh, he's going to share his tips and tricks on that. And 
Um, if you can do it right, you can get some really talented people at a price that uh, would probably surprise you. So you really want to be here Monday for that. Uh, Liz, why don't you share with us a little bit about uh, Kathy Mickelson? All right. So Kathy is my son's girlfriend, fiance. I don't know exactly what title she uses, but she's been in our family for, I don't know, four, maybe five years now. And uh, she is a, uh, she's a, she's a nurse. She is going to school currently to be a, I can't remember, kind of nurse, some fancy schmancy nurse that does, um, I, I can't, oh, wants to put you to sleep, I think. I can't remember what it's called, a, a, anesthesia nurse or, anyway, she's got some special degree she's trying to go for right now. Uh, anyway, the reason why we're bringing her on the show is she works in the medical field. Her family is all in the medical field, has been for decades. And I thought that it would be nice to have somebody that could talk to us more about COVID-19, where they are with um, um, therapeutics and vaccines. She's got a lot of information in that way. Um, how, how the virus has spread a little bit more. I mean, I, I know we feel like we know a lot of this stuff, but I just thought it might be nice to hear it from the insider view. It's a different perspective. But that's what we're being classy on. And we're learning more every day. And there's a lot of a uh, lot of lot of new stuff that we should be talking about. So I'm looking forward to that. Me too. All right. And then we also have Aja on Wednesday. A lot of you probably know Aja. She is Laura Smith uh, from All Star, her operations manager. And I, I thought having her on here would be an awesome opportunity for all the business owners out there to sort of pick the brain of a very, very successful operations manager. Uh, most of you know that Laura's daughter uh, is undergoing cancer treatment right now and has been dealing with that for almost a year now, going on a year. And Aja has been running that operation. So I thought she could share with us some of the struggles, some of the things that she finds value in and in, in being in this position. What are the hard things? What are you looking for in a great uh, operations manager? So, because that's what she is. She's, she's a great operations manager. She is. Yeah, very, me too, Sarah. She is. I mean, she's talented. She uh, strong in technology, uh, tremendous amount of energy. Um, you're, you're going to get, if, you, if you've never met Aja before, you guys are going to be blown away. You need to, yeah. you need to do that. Thursday. Then, then we have a secret guest on Thursday for On The Spot because this is our last Friday, uh, what do I call it? Transmission, I guess. <laughs> the last, last one we're doing on Friday, at least for a while. Yeah. Uh, our plan is to move On The Spot to Thursday. And so next, week's secret guest. The clue is that he is a true family man. Uh, he and his wife work in the business together and they have been married over 24 years, I believe. I, I believe they've been married a quarter of a century, maybe even more. Um, and they have a very, very strong marriage that a lot of people admire and look up to. I think I think you just gave about four or five clues there. Oh, that's a good clue. It's a very very deep and multifaceted clue, but that's fine. We'll, we'll, oh we'll yeah, go. you guys start throwing your questions up right now. Good job, Heather. Thanks for the yeah, vote. Because we're going to get start going. Throwing them up there. So, um, Liz, you're not I, in the car. Liz, why, you are not in your car today. I am going to leave. I've got my, you know, I don't usually wear shoes in my house. I've got my shoes on. I've got my keys ready. I've got my purse here. I'm ready to walk out the door as soon as we're done. So you guys need to queue your questions up because yes. the second that there's no more questions in queue, Liz is bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping we get out of here just a little bit early so that I'm not late to my meeting. So Okay. We'll so we did we did deal day on Wednesday that says yesterday because I showed this yesterday and yesterday it was yesterday. It was two days ago now. Um, 
The deals that we shared on Wednesday are still out there. They're still active, but the clock is ticking. You know, as soon as we're over here, if you guys are interested in a really good deal on Debbie Speed Clean Employee Training System or getting a really good deal on the Ladybug or if you're interested in the PHC training program, we've got an entire bundle there, and that's all I'm going to tell you. But you can save money and get a lot of extra cool stuff, too. Go to the Facebook uh, Live that we did for Smart Business Moves two days ago on Wednesday. Watch it. Get the deal. Do it if you you you, you want to take advantage of it because you wake up in the morning, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. Tom, I don't know if you know this, but Dan bought 26 seats to the PHC program, right, Dan? I did. I, I was just going to say that I, I, I worked the numbers and I and I was identifying every price break I could. And uh, and I got in at, at 26. And, and I feel like I got uh, not only I, did I get a deal, I got a better deal. Uh, so I'm pretty excited yeah. about that. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you 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 will love it, and I know how you operate your business, so it's going to be a boon for you. You do you know that you also got um, 26 COVID classes? Yes, I, that, Dan? absolutely. I couldn't pass up the uh, the chance to to the the PHC program in itself is valuable, but obviously uh, times are changing and news is changing every day, and uh, the updated uh, COVID presentation I think is going to be pretty strong and, and relevant and allows me to bring extra value to the team uh, from a, an authoritative standpoint. That's not just me reading headlines, if you will. So that's kind of why I jumped in on on that. So I guess Liz just spilled a little bit about what part of the deal is, but there's more stuff in it. Oh. So, um, <laughs> I did this yesterday too. I'm so sorry. I am not good at this part of the game. <laughs> but um, one, one thing, one thing, you know, Dan, you, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this. Those seats are good for like an entire year. So, I mean, you don't have to use them all right now. You can kind of look ahead and say, well, how many people are going to be training over the next 12 months and buy them in bulk and save yourself a ton of money, especially with this deal day special, which will be expiring here uh, by the end of the day. Hey, Dan, do you yeah. mind sharing? Uh, I know that you shared this in the MMA group today, and so you might not want to share here, but do you mind sharing what your plan is for those, how you're going to use them? Yeah, I don't, I don't mind sharing at all. I, I had a little bit of strategy in that the 26, um, obviously gives me the benefit to pick and choose uh, who I want. I mean, we can cover our whole team with 26, right? Uh, but I really wanted to incorporate um, time and position, uh, responsibility, those that demonstrate themselves as being, um, have already either proven themselves or those are up and coming players on the team as opposed to um, just giving everyone the test, right? We all know in this industry, someone might be here today and they might not be here in three weeks. So um, while I picked 26, I'm going to be a little bit strategic about uh, who gets the opportunity um, to go through the training. And uh, I think that will allow me to, to get more, more for the dollar when we see who who's in for the long run, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. And I know um, we had a couple other people in, in a group today that were talking about using it as part of their promotion package. Mm -hmm. So as you promote yeah. to the next level, you can take this test and then you get the certificate. And I was like, yeah. oh, y'all are so smart. A, a qualifier, right, to, to get that promotion or, or to get that raise. I think that's great. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, I, I think y'all are so smart. You always have such good ideas. <laughs> All right. Do we have anything else, Tom, before we hit it? I think it's time to hit it. All right. You guys All right. ready? So to we do have those? a couple of questions. It's gonna be a short. It's gonna be a short uh, call today. I got a feeling. I got a feeling we're gonna get some questions going here. There's a few. Yeah, we might. Already. Okay. Dan, you, you know how, how this works. We each get one minute on the clock to answer the question that's put uh, before us here. If okay. you don't have an entire minute, you can stop and we can move on to you know the next, uh, next person or the next question if you're the last person to answer. We take turns answering first because there's some advantage to uh, answering last. You get a little more time to think. Then again, sure. Disadvantages too, because if everybody else is kind of throwing out all their great ideas, you're pretty much left saying, "Yeah, what they said." So it can go both ways. So, 
So you see how he says that we all get a minute, Dan, but let's watch how many times Tom goes over a minute. Like I keep a little tally in my journal over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for, for anyone that knows me, this is a stretch here for me to con consolidate into 60 seconds. So this is, I'm taking this as a personal challenge. I was actually thinking that when Tom was saying, hey, if you don't use up all your time, I was like, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's not happening. You're too much like me that way. <laughs> Except your your answers are, are uh, concise, just longer, but good information. You continually add information. Mine just get the same small piece of information blown into a million bits. Oh, I like I like Sarah's. Oh, uh, Sarah, that's an intimidating question. Yeah, that's okay. fun. So, I like when they come up there, we have a chance to think. Do we want to uh, get started here with Heather's question? I think we should. Yeah. Up top, I'll just go ahead and go first to get us started. You guys ready? Let's do yeah. that. That's a good question, Heather. I don't know if I have any one particular automation to bring in more business. I mean, we've got basic uh, campaigns that, 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 that we run and there are reminders that are set when we've got leads to follow up on and after a while a lead becomes a soft lead and you know they go into different campaigns. Uh, a lot of the automations that we use and in full disclosure, we use Made Central are about keeping customers because it's more important to keep customers than it is to churn them and always be looking for new ones. So we use automations to uh, remind customers of uh, when we're going to be uh, arriving. If there's any changes in their schedules, those are automatically communicated either through text or email or automated uh, vo uh, voice call. We use uh, automations to send out what we call scorecards, quality checks. And a lot of that basically uh, keeps customer satisfaction and keeps uh, helps you keep the customers that you have. And I'll keep that two seconds maybe for some other question, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Cue it All up. right, Tom. Ready? I'm baking it for you. You ready, Dan? I'm ready. Yes. All right. So, you know, I'll start off the same way. There's no one magical automation, I think, that's going to solve everything. Uh, but the, the, the accumulation of... Um, making things simpler in the office, uh, saving time, um, tasks that are repetitive, uh, the ability to connect one software piece to the other to uh, achieve uh, results that eliminate your ability to have to spend time to do them uh, daily. I think we all understand the premise, but not everybody understands the value of really, really digging into those automations. Uh, I'm hesitant. I'm a little hesitant to share here. Uh, the number one automation, I think that kind of uh, is the most impactful in our business has to do with um, seeking uh, seeking reviews, right? When we go out and do a good job, if the client is happy, if they're satisfied with uh, with our job, um, we we have a little trick uh, to uh, solicit their feedback and and get their Google review. Uh, we're uh, we're happy about that, or whatever. Platform that we have. Oh, damn! Yeah. By the way, so when you're a guest, when you're a guest, you can have a few extra seconds. We're you know, okay with that. My, my cadence was like getting faster, and I'm like, ah, 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 here we go. Yeah. But but Liz will remind you of it ad nauseum if you go over. So just just saying, just you, I'll find, you just gotta I'll find the, the balance. Fight. I'll yeah. find the balance. Huh. You ready, Liz? Yeah. All right. So I do not have uh, any kind of a great automation to bring in more business. I wish I did. Uh, I, I, I don't. Um, probably the, the thing that we do to bring in more business is that we routinely contact our customers and we ask for referrals. Um, so that is really, really old school. Um, but I, you guys will remember, was it was last week, I think, maybe the week before when my daughter was on. And she, she touted that too. She said, one of the things that you got to do that's always worked is keep asking for referrals from the people that you already work with. Since we contact our customers every single time we're going to clean, we contact them before to remind them we're coming. And we contact them after to find out if they were happy with the service that we have two opportunities every single time we clean to call them to more people. I saved your bacon on that one. You got yeah. two words. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks. I like it. Okie dokie. Um, 
Can Heather have two questions in a row, or do I need to go somewhere of else? Of course. Yeah, if she has two questions in a row, she can have ten. Yeah, you go, girl. First in, first out. First come, first serve. Right. This is a good question. I kind of like this. You ready, Dan? I'm hey, ready. Katarina. All right. So um, I will tell you, this is almost a, a cheat answer, right? My favorite most used software in the business that is not a CRM, hands down, is Zapier. We've all heard of Zapier. If you haven't, it is a collective uh, software handshake is probably the way I could put that. Um, you have software A, you have software B, and Zapier sits in the middle and talks between the two of them. I think a lot of people in our industry are familiar um, but the ability to take Zapier, uh, and I say it's a cheat answer because it almost ties to the automations, right? Um, connecting A to B uh, to achieve a quicker C, uh, hands down, Zapier is uh, is my favorite um, my favorite software spe uh, piece that's worth um, worth every dollar that that we pay for it every every month, and we use it heavily. Can you that's, good, Dan. that's good, Dan. Yeah. All right. All right. So my favorite thing that we use is Asana. Uh, it's a project management software. And I like it because um, I, I'm not in my office a lot. So I like to be able to see what everybody's working on. And I like to be able to assign stuff. And we do something that we call a scrum. We follow a scrum methodology. And so tracking our scrum activities uh, is a little bit hard when I'm, I'm not there, but we can track them in Asana and that's it. For me, it's Asana. I, I just love using that program. Wow, that's I'm, I'm banking my, my 17. Um, it's like I'm Elena or something, right? Yeah. Okay. Honestly, in terms of the most used software, nothing glamorous about this, but I'm kind of scratching my head. It's probably a toss up between Ring Central meetings and Outlook. I spend more time in email than what I want to admit, but it's just kind of the life I live at the moment. And I'm not going into the office very much at all. And I'm finding that I really don't need to, and I'm still able to communicate using uh, using Ring Central meetings, which is really just a um, white label version of Zoom. But uh, we use Ring Central as our telephone system, so it kind of comes along for free. Um, you know, we use uh, Office 365 Suite. You know, it's got uh, several pieces of software I use a lot. I use OneNote a lot. I use Planner. Um, all the desktop stuff. There we go. We are doing so well. I feel like we should all get gold stars today. We're doing so, so well. <laughs> oh, shoot. There was a question there, and I didn't even pay attention. So this is uh, really isn't uh, on the spot question. but Yeah, I'll that's the one I want to be first on. I want to be first on that one, Tom. Okay, well, are you? Yeah, I guess you are. Go, Liz. Okay, so Sarah, Aja is speaking next Wednesday. <laughs> and I will, if you tell me, I'm not done, Tom. I got more to say. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Go ahead. And anything that you want to know, Rochelle, uh, uh, from Aja, let me know in advance, and I will tee her up. So that she's ready to answer all your questions. I know a lot of people are going to want to hear about Ocean's Eleven, and that's absolutely on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, that's not a that's not a real question because yes, it is. It was so a you're, real need. I mean, it's, it's a real need for no Rochelle. Way, yeah, there's nothing that you know. Same thing. That was a question. That was a question. I'm sorry. You got I'm, I'm not. I'm not first up on the ten thousand. <laughs> that that would be this question. If you had ten thousand dollars to invest, Liz, in your business right now, that Liz, Tom, how would you spend it? You have to tell me what you would do, Tom. Okay. So just just tell everybody. That is a really good question. And if I, you know, what what what. What's the best way to invest $10,000 in my business? Um, 
I have, you know, recently made some investments in electrostatic sprayers. I believe that COVID is going to be with us for the foreseeable future and that the demand, there, there's opportunities to use that, uh, those tools and those technologies to uh, uh, expand our business and to uh, create a higher level of trust with customers. Uh, in terms of, that's about it from a, from a, from a, a capital equipment side. I think the other part of it, and we're doing, we actually are doing this. We're spending a ton more on training. Training is really where it's at. I mean, customers want to be safe. They want to be able to trust that their people know what they're doing. And it's all about health. And the more training you do, the stronger story you have and the stronger brand you can build. Dan, you're up. All right. Uh, sol solid answers, Tom. You're, you're talking about new equipment, new services, new training. I think for me particularly, if I had um, if I had just a an extra ten thousand dollars that I was going to throw at investing in my business right now in this time uh, in this time frame, I I think I would pour that into a new website. Now we're talking about a hypothetical ten thousand dollars, right? We're just free money. I'm I'm going to assume here, um, but I would uh, if it is needed, if it's needed. Uh, I would invest in um, repositioning the website for um, present day relevance, right? We, um, uh, in a, in a pre COVID world, uh, our messaging was one thing and uh, the argument can be made in a current situation, uh, current times, uh, maybe the messaging can be different and it can talk about your electrostatic sprayers. It can talk about uh, the safety and uh, uh, trust factor that, that you bring to the marketplace. Um, I would put ten thousand dollars in into a new website if it if it were me. Good answer. I like that. You uh, ready, Liz? Yeah. So one of the hazards of going last is somebody else always takes your answer. All right, and that, it serves me right for pushing off the answer. So mine would be website. Um, I'd put ten thousand dollars on the website, and then also um, online booking. So that people can book faster, but for like a COVID clean. So something that they could get really, really quickly. Um, and, and everything around safety, health. And I would focus it on the psychological um, health and the psychological safety versus the physical because everybody else is going physical. So I would hit on psychological. Great answer, Dan. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think that's solid. Yeah. The psychological side is the, is the comfort level that people want. Um, whereas, uh, you know, arguably a couple of years ago, they wanted to make sure that it was clean and, and didn't think much beyond that. So, um, yeah, relevant times. Yeah. Okay, Dan, you're up. And the next question is, what is the most valuable position in your company other than yourself? And that's a bit presumptive. I don't know if I would have gone that, even though that was an option. And what do they do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is yours. Go. This is me. Okay. Um, hands, hands down. This is going to sound, uh, this is going to sound like such a, um, opportunist like opportunistic answer <laughs> yeah right so my wife uh my wife sunny joined the business um <laughs> about three year, uh, three three months ago right and um and i'll i'll just be candid and, and and i'll be honest i've been trucking along the way um trying to grow the business um and and you know the, this industry is dominated by by mostly females uh maybe dominated is not the right word but there's more female owners than uh, than not perhaps. Um, so I'm over here thinking like a man and I'm trying to grow a cleaning business, uh, like a man. And then all of a sudden my wife comes in and she invokes, um, an entirely different, uh, train of thought. And all of a sudden we've had uh, a remarkable outcome. So, um, our VIP in office VIP player right now, hands Ooh. down my wife. You're a smart guy. And, and really before, before you go real quick here, Tom, um, I, I have to say that I, I talk to Dan every, every day or almost every single day. Mm -hmm. And he's not just saying that to flatter his wife. He really, he really does believe that she really has brought a, a new dimension to, to the business that it, is, is game changer. Awesome. Yeah. It's been a yeah. game changer. 
No, I, I didn't I, want people to think you're just like fluffing up your wife because it is the truth. You know, yeah. my situation, Liz, you don't have to stretch my imagination to see how that can yeah. be true. Absolutely. Your, your situation is very similar to Dan's, Tom, in that you kind of have a quiet wife that does like is a powerhouse. You ready to go, Liz? I am. Um, so the most valuable position in my company is a position that we call the culture coach. And this position is responsible for um, for a lot of things. Uh, most of the time, people think of it as the person that's in charge of like parties and stuff, barbecues, and parties, and, and um, you know, anniversaries and birthdays and celebrations. And she does all that. Um, but really, it's more about making sure that our mission and values are adhered to on a daily basis in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's her job to question everything we do around uh, mission and values. I wish I had more time. I'd give you guys a quick example of an employee that was upset by something. She was going against the office and turned out the employee was right and the office was wrong because of mm -hmm. values. Very good. I've got a lot of people in my organization. I've got a lot of positions that are valuable. I mean, Liz will tell you, I've got uh, some people in my management rank that I'm really very fond of. Um, but honestly, COVID has got me looking at, 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 at you know, our organization. And I've always had a deep appreciation for our cleaning professionals because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are generating the revenue to make everything work. But in a COVID-19 world, they're even more important, even more valuable. They're out there in the front lines dealing with uh, some tough situations. And this ties into my previous answer. You know, we're investing heavily in training because quite honestly, um, if you give your cleaning professionals the opportunity to create all the value they're capable of creating, that makes everybody else's job in your organization easier. And I believe that we would all have better businesses if we put more focus on training our cleaning professionals. It's a good answer, Tom. Really good answer. Thank you. Dan has a really smart wife. Who's that? There you go. You got, you got one vote there. <laughs> they, they, they might have insight to who I am, and they're like, yeah, his, his wife's the smart one. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> hey, Dan. Um, get, get those suggestions for me and maybe uh, talk to me in group on Monday. That'd be awesome. Or send them over either way. Um, you are up first this time, Liz. I am. What's my question? Okay. How can you deal with Airbnb hosts who ignore CDC guidelines and still has the same day check out, check in, no proper ventilation, no good sanitation, as we are having just three hours between tenants. An owner asks us to ignore all safety rules and complete project as soon as possible. That's, uh, that's uh, there's something to be learned here. That's a good question. Yeah. You, uh, you ready, Liz? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the question because it's covering your face and people need to be able to see you go. Uh, okay, so uh, my thinking here is that you have two options. One is that you either do what he says and put all of your people in jeopardy, or you don't do what he says and you lose the job. In my world, it would not even be a question. I'm not going to put my people in jeopardy. So I would explain what I can do versus um, um, trying to talk to him about anything that he wants to talk about. I would explain to him what it was going to take for me to be able to do the job because I would still want to save the job, but I'm not willing to put anybody's uh, life or health at risk. Very good, very good. I'm up next. Yeah, I'm kind of with Liz on this. Um, some people just don't make good fits as customers. And this kind of sounds like somebody who doesn't really respect you, your business, or the people that uh, 
you know, work in your business and that's the case, then maybe you just need to have that discussion and say that, you, you know, you're not, the, your business isn't a good fit for, for what they need. And one of a couple of things can happen, you know, they might back off and say, okay, let's go ahead and follow the rules or, you know, you guys may shake hands and part ways. I don't know where Airbnb is with all of this, if they really care, if they monitor this in any way, if they would have any interest in knowing what you know. But uh, if you feel that the public is at risk, you might want to at least share some of this information with Airbnb as well. Dan, you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. So um, in the context of the question, it's, it's written as host, right? Plural. So I'm not sure if we're talking about one particular client, which would be easier to handle. And, and maybe um, as uh, the other answers have, uh, have been put forth, um, you either work with the individual or, or decide you don't want to work with the individual. So, but if you're collectively dealing with multiple people, um, there may be an opportunity for you to add value to the marketplace by explaining why you must abide by the CDC rules and what it's doing for them and what it's doing for their guests and ultimately what it's doing for um, their reviews and, and their reputation. Uh, without doubt, I agree with Liz, hands down. Um, if we're talking about a, an integrity issue, if we're talking about uh, pure neglect, um, I would not want to put my team uh, at risk in, in any respect at all. But I would look first for the opportunity to, um, to show and demonstrate additional value by saying, this is how we operate, this is why, and this is the value that it brings you. And then let them decide if they want to maintain that relationship. Very good. That was a good question. That was a good question. <sighs> I, I, have, I see we don't have any questions over here, but I have got two questions on the side on my phone here um, that I thought I could throw out there. Uh, I, I'm hesitant to because if I don't throw out these two questions that people gave me, we are, we're off the call early. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's I think it's only fair. Do you want to type, Tom? I'm on it. Go ahead. All right. What have you done to increase your chance of getting jobs during COVID-19. Oh gosh, it's a solid question. All right, and I'm warning you guys, no more questions coming through. I only have one more question, it's a small one. So we may be done early. If you guys are done hearing, then that's great. But otherwise, get your questions out there. Okay, uh, Liz, you went first last time. That means I'm going first this okay. time. Yep. Okay. Well, one of the big things we've done is implement a communication program to stay in touch with all of our recurring clients. Uh, we wound up uh, shutting down operations for four weeks and wanted to make sure that they knew that we weren't going away for good. And, you know, they understood why and appreciated the fact that we were um, trying to bend the curve, if you will, back when uh, less was known and the ability to treat the disease was, uh, was less than it is now. Um, now that we're back open, uh, we still have clients that are, you know, concerned about contracting the disease and they're not ready to start service yet. So we're staying in touch with them. Um, we acquired a, uh, the accounts from a, a large uh, competitor in, in, in one of our markets and picked up a whole lot of work that way. But uh, a big part of it is just communicating with, with, with our incumbents. You ready, Dan? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, gosh, I wish I had um, I wish I had a, a magic answer that would um, would be good for everyone. I think uh, to some degree that this might be market centric, right? Um, what might work well in my market uh, may be different in another state that is defined more as a hot spot, uh, or perhaps the people that live there are a little more vi uh, vigilant and and hyper aware, uh, whereas other states maybe not so much. Um, in our case, uh, we took a couple um, leaps of faith in uh, engaging the community um, and engaging select uh, segments of the community. Um, to reach out and kind of build trust, build relationship, and um, and and lead with uh, the ability to uh, to deliver 
with the the safety precautions necessary to to let that group and and those people know that we are um, abiding by CDC guidelines. We're working in their uh, best interest, and as a result of that, uh, we've seen uh, we've seen an increase in business um, during the time where maybe not everybody has. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with um, developing that trust, communicating uh, what it is that that you're doing during during this time. You took full advantage of the guest overtime <laughs> rule. Good job. Yeah. He used your extra time and he used my extra time. I, I rolled the dice. I thought, well, here we, we can we can I can try to push the push the line. Push You're the like line it's over. virtual. What can they really do to me? <laughs> <laughs> wait, you wait, Dan. You will pay in group next week. <laughs> uh, okay, my I'm up. Yeah. You are. You ready? Yep. Uh, so I started, when I got my PPP money, I started a group um, that uh, was called House Cleaning for Heroes, and I started giving away clean, uh, free cleaning to the hero people in our neighborhood. You guys know, you remember that Heather came on here, and she um, got some national press for this idea. Um, it brought me more business because um, obviously I was doing the free clean, but it also opened up my um, my network to this medical community, and so those people had my name now in a bigger, better way. And so we've gotten more jobs from those people. We've signed up some recurring service because of that. It didn't happen right away, but little by little. Cool. I wonder whose brilliant idea that was. Uh, <laughs> Liz, that may or may not have been the trust factor that I was uh, talking about with the select group. So uh, you queued that up great. Okay, good. <laughs> you have a suggestion here, social media. Um, Okie dokie. Um, Liz, do you have one last question in your uh, queue? Is, this, is that a question, social media and community groups? I think that was just a suggestion of something else to do to get more uh, business during COVID. That, that makes that makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, where's my where did I write it? I don't remember. Oh, okay. It is. What is your retirement plan? I'm curious who asked that question. That's a very uh, that's a, a very forward thinking question. <laughs> I'm guessing it was somebody that was older. Right. It is. So, uh, Dan, I think you're up first this time. All right. Yeah. All right. So, um, like many entrepreneurs, right, I've got the, um, the desire to do this today. Uh, but um, between now and next Sunday, uh, I might have four more ideas. And trying to keep uh, on track and make sure that uh, I'm focused on what, what is happening today um, is my current uh, agenda. But when we talk about retirement plans, um, in my at my current age, in my current state, I, I kind of don't see, I'm not looking at a retirement plan. I'm looking at what, um, what can we do to grow the business uh, to the next level. I'm looking at things like what will the next business be. Uh, I'm looking at what would it, what, what, it might look like to um, to have multiple businesses at the same time. So uh, I can't answer that uh, to the full extent because my brain isn't exactly focused on retirement. Uh, I'm more focused on how uh, can I be successful here um, and uh, and deciding what the, the next venture might look like. Very good. Liz, you ready? Uh, yes. All right, so I do not have a great retirement plan because truthfully, I just can't even picture retiring. It's just so like outside of the realm of my life. And I am retirement age, but I just still don't even feel close to retiring. Um, so my plan is to probably I would sell, I would sell the business and um, you know, take the proceeds and live out the rest of my life. If, if it came to that, and I'm assuming that that would only happen if something happened to me, 
if I was injured in some way or I, you know, I got very sick. Um, other than that, I don't see myself really retiring. Um, I just don't. I see myself as always being part of my business, even if it's just in an ancillary fashion, you know, that's a quarter meetings or something. Working, working is fun. Working is fun. I like working. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I have no real retirement plans. I enjoy doing what I'm doing and don't know what I would do if I wasn't doing this. You know, I work as, as, as hard as I choose to. And um, I, I have a friend who, who when was asked that, his, his response was, my, retire my retirement plan is work till I die. Well, you know. My opinions might change on that at some point in time, but for the foreseeable future, I'm just doing what I'm doing now. You know, I'm trying to build value along the way and make everything that I'm working on worth more, you know, t today than it was yesterday. And with the idea of it being worth more, more tomorrow, but um, no immediate plans. You know, I, I feel like everything we've learned up until now is what has us operating today um but but don't lose sight on what you're learning today can be um valuable uh, for whatever you might be doing next and and uh i think that's um that's something i think about often right i couldn't have gotten here uh if i didn't learn that what am i learning now that's going to get me there um, take you to the next place yeah and what's for sure. one thing yeah i i agree it's it, i guess that that's what it is for me is um, when I think about retiring, I think of doing no work and I don't know what gardening. I, I don't like to garden. I, mean, I just, I can't think of what I would be doing if I wasn't, you know, um, like I love the MMA groups. What if I wasn't doing that? I mean, I'm looking forward to foundations in March. We're going to work like dogs. We work, how many hours do we, would you say we put in a week while we're there, Tom? We put in a good eighty hours, wouldn't you say? We're, we're, we, it's a it's a it's a solid seven days. Um, some of them are twelve plus hours, fourteen hours long. Easy okay. seventy, easy seventy. Yeah, that, easy. Sounds, that sounds like a wonderful vacation. For some yeah. People. <laughs> So I, I, I'm looking forward to that. Right? It's far away. It's in March, and I'm still like. I'm really, I'm already thinking about my presentations and what, which ones are being updated and upgraded. And you know, I, I can't help it. I love it. You know, Dan, I was talking about the book from book club, right? Uh, last month that I'm like, oh, I'm modifying a whole big section of foundations around this idea. Right. So yeah, I remember, I just can't even imagine that I will not want to be doing that. And I'll want to do what? I don't know. I like to read, so maybe I'll just sit around all day and read. I, I can't. I can't picture it. So, and, um, and plus, you've worked so hard for so many years to figure stuff out, and kind of once things start making more sense, why do you want to stop now? It's just starting to get fun, you know. Yeah, like like Ernie said too. Yep. If you're having fun, it's not work. When it's not fun, I'll retire. Yeah, I'm with you there. Ah, Julie, I know she can't wait for foundations either. So, yeah. Oh, um, class we, you offer. Yeah, got, Liz, that's the class that we have. We've got nine minutes before the top of the hour, and I don't see any more questions. Me either. We're out of here early. So, just remember that. Um, da -ding, da -ding. Greg's going to be here on Monday. Greg, if you were with us uh, the other week when he was talking about how he does his SEO, where he's got two separate cleaning companies ranking on the first page in a market as big as Dallas. I mean, that in of itself is um, one accomplishment, but I mean, he's, he's a, uh, he's like a Renaissance man. He's got a lot of uh, tricks in his, uh, in his, his tool bag. So he's going to tell us how to, how to, how to, how to get some help from, from different parts of the world where we can get a lot of talent at a, uh, lower price point. I'm going to go to cleaning business today. If you haven't uh, 
subscribe, please do. It helps us and it'll help you. You'll get great information like uh, newsletters with uh, the most recent uh, articles and special deals that we're doing and promotions and like uh, analysis for deal day. And if you go to, I think we updated this smart business moves, resources. Well, you're looking that up, Tom. Lucia, who is your company owner? You're right. Her plan is working, right? She's a realtor. She's hands off. You're on vacation. She's on vacation. <laughs> that does sound like a win. <laughs> Vacations are good, just not not doing anything. But who's your owner? I'd love to hear that. Uh, company owner. All right. Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. No, oh, this is looking good. Brandon's been really cleaning this up, huh? Busy little beaver, isn't he? Yeah. He does good That's work. You guys uh, stay safe. It's a weekend. Get some rest. Uh, we'll be back at it Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for coming, Dan. Appreciate yeah. it. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. I, I enjoyed it and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, to participate. Thank you. you. Are, this is the first time, but I promise you it won't Not be the last time. I look forward to Not it. Outstanding. <laughs> Thank you guys.